Hello, everybody, and welcome to our information session on Blue Canoe, our app for learners infused with the color vowel approach for teaching English as a second language. I'm Karen Taylor. I'm CEO of Blue Canoe, and I'm the author of the color vowel approach and the color vowel method. I'm happy to be here today with you to answer questions and first to give you a lot of information that you might be interested in. Um, I will, I'll take a moment. I have, have a couple of people entering the room. Let's get Pat in here. Um, I'd like to open up to questions at the beginning so that I know, you know, where I'm headed with information I give you. Um, this will be a half hour session and I'll leave you with some resources for you to learn more. But my goal will be to make sure you have enough information to take a next step, right? In using Blue Canoe with your students. We have a wonderful opportunity for you to use it for eight weeks for free with your students as a, a way to pilot it, a little bit like that desk copy we used to get as teachers at conferences, right? Uh, so it's just a way to go about that. Uh, we are very dedicated to the technology of what it means to teach with an app, and we support teachers with real training, you know, and very hands-on support for you. So if you're new to teaching with technology, uh, don't be afraid. That's part of what we do um, both at Blue Canoe and at English Language Training Solutions, where Color Vowel Chart and the Color Vowel Approach are, are housed. Um, so please welcome. Um, use the chat if you would. Go ahead and just look for that. And um, I think I know where you're calling in from, but why don't you let each other know? I'll say hello from Maryland, right over there. That's me. And that way we also have a sense, we have a pretty broad audience joining us today, uh, either in the recorded session or now. Uh, glad to see that you're here for New Jersey, just up the road there, Nancy. Um, and so let's go ahead and we'll get started. What I'll do is I will um, spotlight myself so you can really see up close for sure, right? Um, Blue Canoe is just a brief bit of the story. Blue Canoe is an app that was born out of the last 22 years of my sort of my life's work with the color vowel chart. Uh, so the chart itself is something that I created uh, back in 1999. Um, it's a way to approach spoken English as and, and a way to bridge it over to written English. So it's this touchstone for organizing words by the way that they sound. If that sounds odd, we've never really had a way to do that before. And we've either had to resort to phonetic symbols or some other way, but this is a very clean way for us to organize words by the way they sound. And I, I think I'll spend a moment here just to make sure um, everybody in the room is familiar enough with what we do with the chart so that Blue Canoe really makes sense to you. Uh, but essentially if I take, uh, say this month, this is January, which is a three syllable word. Um, in writing, I could organize it by say its first letter, um, second letter, I could alphabetize it. I could organize it possibly, hmm, how else could I organize a written word? A couple ways, if you think like dictionaries or alphabetical, maybe a thesaurus, we could organize words by the, what they mean, or maybe in a grammar book, we'd organize them by their parts of speech. But by theme, say it again. By theme, by, by theme. Yep, by subject, by definition, by meaning, by use. Right. Um, but organizing by sound, uh, what can we do? We'd take January, 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 January. We can listen to that word and find the stress. January, and then we can locate this. The the heart, the kernel of that sound is a vowel sound. Ja, January. And we'll locate it on the chart. And that is a black cat word, black cat January. In this way, we're able to take long and short words alike, organize them by the way they sound at their essence, meaning sort of the center of their profile as a spoken word, and not spend so much time on every single part of that word. So it starts to really cut down on the amount of time we have to talk about a word uh, it strengthens the ability of the student to practice that word as a black word, for example. And so each of these phrases on the chart represents a sound of English, uh, a vowel sound in particular, and we're able to describe a word by its color. 
Okay. Um, I can ask questions like, you know, to Jackie, I'd say, how do you say your last name? And she could let me know that it's what? Ehlers. Ehlers. So I was wondering whether it was red pepper Ehlers or gray day Ehlers, right? So there's, you know, those two sounds that are very similar. And yet now I have a name for each of those. So that's a bit of what the chart is about. And this is a, a, a brain-based approach to teaching that uh, cuts down on talking about pronunciation and maximizes doing pronunciation. And it also brings in a variety of accents so that we have all one way to talk about accents. And I see, I see Robin's in the room and I know she's calling in from Australia. Um, and so we, we have a lot of great conversations that allow all of us to have that conversation because of the chart. Um, so with that in place, if, if you don't mind, I know, you know, we, I love talking about the color bell chart, but I want to put that in place so that you have a context for what Blue Canoe does. Um, if you imagine what we do in the classroom, we teach for our hour or two hours or three hours a week with a given student, and then what are they doing the rest of the time? So they can do homework, you know, that's printed, anything that's in writing, they certainly can do that. But when it comes to speech, it's not easy for students to set out to practice speaking on their own. They're, they're left wondering if they're doing it correctly. And I find too often they simply won't do it because, I mean, it doesn't seem worth it. Why would I want to practice doing something if I'm not doing it well or correctly? In fact, maybe it's harmful. Maybe I'm forming bad habits. I don't want to do that. Uh, so they don't, right? Um, so we've created Blue Canoe as sort of the other 23 hours of the day. <laughs> Not all of those, but somewhere in there every day, we want students to practice spoken English. So this is a practice-based app. Um, it's much less about learning and much more about doing. And therefore, uh, it has a couple of peculiarities to it that I'll be pointing out as we move along, okay? Uh, a couple of the main features of Blue Canoe, uh, we provide a daily plan called Today's Plan. Uh, that plan has the student doing a workout that lasts about 15 minutes, I'll say. I say about because it depends on how robustly they involve themselves in the practice. So if they check out a sentence two or three times, uh, and if they're using the open hand the way we train them to, uh, that can be a very good workout that lasts 30 minutes. Um, all of this is tracked on the backside in our system and you, the teacher, are able to view the time that they've spent uh, expressed in points. So we I can tell you more about that another time, uh, but we do have a teacher's dashboard where you can see how much time did they spend and where they receive points for completing activities, okay? So when they have, for example, this sentence-based lesson assigned to them, they won't receive the credit of this, this, this little uh, circle you see here too uh, on the left side of the screen will turn green when they've finished all six sentences of that exercise. And so we, we have a way to kind of keep the, the focus you know, in place uh, while also spending time and being free to look around in the app. And so the two views down here, this is the, the browse as you see at the bottom of the screen here, uh, is the, the way that they can look around and do whatever they want. And then at the same time, they can go to today's lesson to do what we've given them that day, okay? All of this allows them to start exploring words they already know, but have not had a lot of confidence saying, or words that they've been saying inaccurately for a long time. Um, each of these colors on the color vowel chart, we have boiled down into an iconic image. And I'll show you how we use those. So take red pepper eh, that we used earlier as my question for, for Jackie, you know, is it red or is it gray? Um, I can use the symbol that we have for red pepper eh, as you see right up here at the top with equity. Um, and we can now mark a word by its stressed vowel sound. Notice that that's quite illuminating. You know, if you know the word equal and you don't have any other knowledge about anything, you just assume that that next word is equity. Right, But with that small Q, we're able to let students know in advance, how does this word sound? Red, pepper, equity. Okay. In this way, again, you have this sort of lean, efficient way to get to the heart of the matter without having to have a long conversation. 
Okay. Similarly, olive sock equality. Gray day equation, silver pin equivalent. So very quickly, students get up and running with these images as these tiny reminders of exactly which sound they need to be aiming for. And this helps take care of the spelling sound problem of English that we're all familiar with, right? That a word can look one way, but sound another, or it could look away and we don't know how it sounds like Jackie's last name, you know, E-H-L-E-R-S, -E Ehlers or Ellers, I don't know. Maybe something else for that matter. She could tell me that it's Ulers, and it would come, you know, I would accept that. We don't know a lot about words and their origins at face value. So it's, that's why I spend so much time with names. They're a lot of fun that way. Great. So once we have these in place, and we do very early on, we're able to gamify learning. So uh, one of our first games that students play, in fact, the first game is Color It Out, which you see up here in the upper left portion of the home screen there. And when they play Color It Out, uh, this is a game that we actually offer as a card-based game, handheld. And it proved so popular that we turned it into an app and, and then Blue Canoe kind of fleshed out around that. So uh, this is our cornerstone game. And what they're doing here is matching one word with another based on their shared stressed vowel sound. So here the turn would end up being black cat fascinated, black cat annual. You can hear that coming, right? By the time you get to the sixth word, you really want to apply that ah sound. And the line under the A and annual and makes it clear for the student how to say this word. And if they're not quite sure, they will see, actually when you drag that card, here's just a different view of another set of cards, okay? Uh, when they drag it into this place where they're going to take their turn, they can listen and practice with help me say my turn. And they'll hear exactly that turn. Again, sounds like this. Go ahead and take out your hand and practice it with me. Here we go. Uh, starting from the left and going to the right. Red pepper consensus red pepper revenue, okay? So that is the turn, that's called the spoken turn. Uh, that's a patented process that we, we've been working on for years and years, and we've found that it works well, uh, that students, uh, that any player is able to take the sound that is repeated in the first five words, red pepper consensus, red pepper, and then they're ready to apply it to the sixth word. It's a kind of uh, psycholinguistic flooding that takes place where the same sound is repeated. And so this is a guide in and of itself for learners. Um, and a lot of times there's a lot of sort of revelation about words that they've known for years um, that they've been mispronouncing because of the way they look. So then when they can apply this, it, suddenly they can ferret out, you know, that word that they've been saying incorrectly. Oh, I always said revenu, you know, or I always said revenue. Um, and so they have these tiny adjustments as well as new words that they learn along the way, okay? Um, so that's a bit of Color It Out. Uh, we have a second word-based game called Sort It Out where they are sorting words as they fall um, into one category or another. So here we have green and silver. And this is something that, you know, when you watch the game in action and watch students play, it's illuminating because for us, it'll be easy to decide whether um, say a word like, um, take a word like mission, mission. What color is mission? Which way will I swipe it? I'll swipe it to the left, right? And I'll get it down into green. Um, I'm sorry, to the right and get it into silver. But what if I'm a speaker of Spanish and I'm looking at it and I say mission, mission, mission. Now I have to really think and I may not know. Um, so you get to form a kind of awareness of what you think the category is. And by the end of the game, depending on, on how it turns out for you, let's say here is a person who got nine out of the 16 words uh, categorized correctly, then you get to go back and look at your word list, okay? And see what went wrong. So we've watched and we've observed learners really taking advantage of these lists with their color valve organizers and other graphic organizers we provide to explore their assumptions about words, okay? Um, the third and most robust feature though of Blue Canoe is the lessons section. And this is sentence-based. Uh, this is where they can select 
uh, lessons according to their interests, in addition to the daily plan that's also providing them with a guide. Okay. In there, each of these categories has subcategories. So you can see, for example, in just one of those categories, you can keep scrolling down uh, to see what's under technology. And then when you pick one of these lessons, there are six sentences within. And that's, that's one sentence long. So one sentence is part of that lesson, and here's what it might look like, right? Unmarked, uh, we could listen. Um, you could also go for a color valve markup in advance. Actually, I'll just do it like this. How might a student mispronounce this sentence? So what we do here is we have machine learning and speech recognition combined with the color valve approach so that when they speak, uh, we're able to evaluate precisely the stressed vowel sounds and provide feedback. So if this learner said something like, um, let's consider the alternatives before deciding, something like that. That's a pretty reasonable um, non-native delivery uh, for a Spanish speaker, okay, who doesn't know these words very well. And so when, they, when you say something like that, let's consider, consider uh, the alternatives, what do we get? Okay, and this is, this is kind of a typical feedback screen. 28%, um, there's some problems here. They're highlighted and they're prioritized. We've given uh, feedback on the words that are most important in the sentence first. And if it were some of the smaller or other words in the sentence, we would only give feedback on those after the most important words have been evaluated, okay? When you tap on each of these, you can then get feedback that says something to the event of, um, well, did you know that this is actually a silver pin word? This is not a green T word, um, that this is a purple word, okay? Or you're using the wrong stress. There's also some pretty interesting features down in the extras that I wanted to kind of start with um, because that pronunciation, remember what I said? Please consider the alternatives before deciding. And so what we're using is we're taking Siri, uh, just figuratively Siri, and using the real speech system in real time to, to, to transcribe what the learner said. So they can actually look at how their phone is misunderstanding them. And then they also get the feedback from us. Let me give you another example. Okay, um, here's a, a three-part sentence. The scientific method is a way to investigate cause and effect. Uh, we can look at that in a scaffolded way so that the learner can practice knowing that method, investigate, effect are all red words, okay? When they go ahead and say this sentence, will it be perfect just because they know that those, those are red words? No, right? Because there are some features of their speech that persist beyond knowing. You might know it's red, but that doesn't stop you from saying method, 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 investigate, effect, okay, effect. And so let's look at some more feedback that they might get there, okay? Um, they say mesod and they see some feedback, they tap on that and they get something like this. This is a red pepper word. I hear you using gray day. So this is a recording that plays as well as the visual feedback, the printed. Um, it lets them know, you know, I understood you, but this is something you probably wanna work on, okay? And then there are plenty of opportunities to really listen to this word and you, the teacher, and I, the teacher, through my videos, uh, teach them how to use this feedback with the open hand so that they're actually performing the stress, um, this being the time on the vowel. So the open hand is a critical part of using Blue Canoe effectively, okay? Um, just if you would, I you probably have a phone close by, so pick it up and realize how often we sit with our phones and kind of you know, we do this kind of thing. It's two-handed or we have a hand or we put a hand down. But when students use Blue Canoe, we have them holding with one hand and gesturing with the other. So it is a two-handed app. And this is a little different than probably any other app I know of in the language world. Um, you need to reinforce that as the teacher, I've found because it's just so not part of what we think of as using an app. Um, so, and, and this is all new to them. Um, so I train teachers, uh, we have wonderful training courses so that you know this method really well. And so that learners can make the most of Blue Canoe and do that high quality practice outside of class.
Okay. So the line that you see here for method, try that. Method. Method. Right. When they say method, 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 it's you might be noticing that I've changed the th sound, but the critical part of it is that they're not using very much stress. Because we can overcome little consonant errors, but it's when the stress is out of place, the rhythm is off. Um, that's the most critical sort of deal breaker of English. Okay, so we start with those big picture items that are different from what native speakers might notice as part of an accent and instead get to the real heart of what is, what is it that makes us comprehensible, okay? Um, moving back and along, what I'd like to do is just mention um, that our sentences in Blue Canoe bridge into classroom time as well. We offer uh, to teachers, you can take a look you know, through spreadsheets that we have that show you all of the sentences in Blue Canoe, and you can pull out the first sentence of any lesson that you see here in column one and use that as kind of a mini whiteboard instantly you know if you're teaching online your students open blue canoe and they've got the same first sentence that you do in the lesson on math and science on the topic of geography for example geography is much more than understanding maps and so now we have a way to spend time with a sentence i'm not having to write it anywhere um, your students can use it to practice in a way that's both beneficial to the sentence itself but also to their practice of blue canoe outside of class so lots of great ways to include Blue Canoe in your instruction um, as, a, as a convenience, okay? We provide learners with um, access to the color valve system at all times, so they can always remind themselves of what each symbol means. Um, and then the probably the most, I think, one of the most powerful features of the app is the dictionary. Um, and I wanted to just spend a couple minutes on that before we take some questions. Um, I'm coming back to that word equity. You can look up any word of English here. Uh, this is a dictionary that we have used with integrations from the Oxford Online Dictionary. Um, so we, we import their um, definitions. We keep that pretty minimal and work mostly on the markup and providing that key vowel sound that students need, okay? When it's a word that has two meanings, two definitions, like a heteronym like this one, they get both entries in one place, wind and wind, right? Um, when uh, it's a long word, they suddenly and very quickly, they don't even have to listen to it because that color vowel image and the underline in admirable shows them where the stress is. So as long as they can use their hand well, black, cat, admirable. Then, you know, if they say ad, ad, admirable, admirable, um, they might make some other mistakes and they can listen or get corrections in other ways, but it's much more comprehensible very quickly and early on, okay? If you're interested in using this, by the way, we do have a free browser extension that's available on our website at bluecanoelearning.com. Uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a link to our browser extension. And we have that for Chrome, Safari, Firefox, what have you, okay? Um, I can provide you with, uh, I wanted to provide you with links anyway today. Um, so let me grab those for you in the chat. Take a look over there. Let me see if I can use my chat well today. Sometimes it doesn't like to have me paste things in. There we go, good. Um, so as I wrap up, I'm gonna mention exactly the, this sort of outline that's over here in the chat to you. Um, ways to get started, you know, this is a very sophisticated app. It's a lot of work that we do. Um, when students purchase it directly in the app store, um, you know, we sell it for a year long subscription or six months or even month to month, but it is an investment and it is an investment for schools too. So before we ask for that investment, we offer ways for you to get your feet wet. Uh, for the student who's purchasing in the app store on their own and they don't have a teacher, I'll just call them a user for now. Uh, for the user, they can do a seven day free trial before it converts to a paid subscription. And that's sort of typical of the app world whenever you try a paid app like that. Um, but for us educators, I want you to step away from that model to, you know, you the teacher can sign up for our teacher pilot program. Um, that's free. When you get into the teacher pilot program, you get a premium account free of charge that you'll keep because I, I like you to have the app and i like you to talk about it. You then can enter our teacher pilot program course space. And that's 
it has tons of information about Blue Canoe. Who is it for? You know, is this for, given what you've seen, is this for eight-year-olds? You know, just sort of questions like that. No, it's not. This is an app that's made for adults. It's a user interface that's adult-oriented, adult topics. Um, but it does, you know, we want to have those conversations. So it asks you, you know, who is it that you teach? Is this right for them? Um, if you work with adults, are they tech literate adults or are they going to have some challenges? And if they are going to have challenges, we just want to be ready for those. You know, how to onboard them, how to introduce them to downloading an app for the first time. You better make sure they have smartphones. You know, all kinds of considerations that go into, into place when, when you really think about it, you know, if you want to be successful. And so the teacher pilot program is a place where I ask those questions to you and you're able to kind of do this assessment and this preparation before making the next decision. And that is, do I want to do this eight week trial? It's a one time opportunity to try Blue Canoe with as many students as you want, up to 25 um, in a classroom, whether it's online, face to face, and they get the premium version of Blue Canoe as well. No payment. They don't enter a credit card, nothing at all. They just get premium from you, okay? And during those eight weeks, I support you. We have all kinds of sessions available for free and, and I give you answers to all your questions, okay? Um, beyond that, I provide you also with opportunities to get trained in Blue Canoe um, and Color Val through our training program. But before I talk about that, I'll just mention, I do, I do provide a nice outline over there in the teacher pilot program of what'll happen over those eight weeks so that you can really prepare and know, you know, how do you support effective ed tech in your classroom? So that it's not this, you know, neither is it nothing, because nothing, nothing will happen. If you provide no support or just say, go use this app, you'll get minimal results. But if you put some energy into it, as I've outlined here, uh, then, you know, your students will come knowing, my teacher values this, this is a method that works, and I know how it works because my teacher works with me on it. And it starts to work its way into your own classroom as well as a method for teaching that saves you time and that increases student uh, involvement in their own spoken English, okay? Um, knowing about the color valve approach is going to be very handy. Uh, it's something I recommend. Uh, we do offer training around the color valve approach over at color valve. So I mentioned that in the second of my links over there in the chat. Uh, we have our next training program starts February 9th, and that's our level one course called Level One Complete. Uh, we have a, a, a more streamlined version of that called Color Valve Fast. And so I've provided you with information about that as well in that link. Okay. Um, Peer English Practice is the third link that I provided there. That is our free class for students and teachers. I've seen Jackie there several times. It's a lot of fun. I do that twice a month on Thursdays. And it's simply a way to uh, come together as a global community. So this is worldwide that people come um, to do spoken English, to work with the rhythm of English, uh, to have fun with it and to put it into our bodies and to not look too much at words during that half hour that we meet. So it's a bit of a demo of the method in, in practice. It's also just a time to really just enjoy using and playing with language. Okay. And finally, our fourth link that I've provided here in the chat uh, provides you with a way to uh, participate in our upcoming events. We have lots of public free events as well as paid events, um, including tomorrow's session on working with uh, Japanese learners of English. That's a free event uh, Friday afternoon. And then on Saturday, we have a wonderful workshop coming up on grammaring the color vowel way. So ways to teach grammar in a discovery based approach that integrates beautifully with the color vowel approach. And that's open to the public uh, and that's a, a fee-based workshop, but we keep it pretty humble. So um, just a bit of information there for you. I'd like to open up with a couple of questions. I have about five minutes now, but I'm also happy to answer questions at karen at bluecanoelearning.com. So feel free to write directly to me there. I'll put that in the chat as well. That's uh, karen at bluecanoelearning.com. Thanks a lot for being here. I'm open to questions at this time. Karen, I had put one question in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Is it just, like, can this be used on a laptop or is it um, only for like tablets or phones? It's for mobile devices. So that can be mm -hmm. a phone, that can be a tablet. 
It can be Apple or Android and Android being okay. all those other ones. Um, we've created it knowing and, and getting very wonderful feedback from our users. Um, learners want ways to practice in private and uh, mm -hmm. mobile devices are a great way to make that possible. So when we had, you know, when we made some feasibility decisions on how do we decide to program this, um, we had to decide, well, I think right. phones are the way to go. So that's where we, where we went. So can we have access to any of their recordings? No, that's, yeah, okay, we don't. Private. Yeah, it's private, uh, but they do get feedback. More than anything, it's, it's you're not gonna use, it's an interesting question. Um, you know, you will be working with them anyway. So you'll be working mm -hmm. with them on their pronunciation with activities you have. Um, right. What we do is we have, we have those recordings in the cloud and that's how we train our machine learning. Okay. Their recordings, but they get feedback on that. Um, so, you know, and, and then they're able to go back and do that lesson again, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Those are, those are nice questions. Other questions. Jackie, I remember you all used um, Blue Canoe at Santa Fe Community College a while back. That was a very, very early beta of the app. So I'd love to see you, you know, with the eight week trial, if you're interested. Okay, I'll see if I can, it's my schedule that I have a problem with, but I'll try and do it. Yeah, <clears throat> um, let me just finish by making sure you know what the next step would be. Um, on our website, which I've provided to you, I think up at the very first link, you would end up on our page here at Blue Canoe Learning. Um, here is your one, two, three for getting started. And the try it for yourself and try it with your students are kind of a one two approach that you achieve by filling out this form. This is not a form for let us send you every newsletter we've ever thought of. This form enrolls you in the teacher pilot program. So um, sorry, I didn't mean to show that. Um, but you would go ahead and fill out this information. And what you'll get then is a direct link to our Canvas platform where we run the teacher pilot program. It's a self-access course. It's free and open to you. And uh, it's, there are no assignments. This is just a place where the information and the steps are. And that's where you'll get that handy overview that I, I showed you, the eight-week overview. Um, and it'll give you all of the, the next steps for starting your eight-week pilot when you decide that's the right time. Okay. Um, so this is your next step right here. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for coming today. I appreciate your time. Uh, do tell, you know, if you, if you have colleagues who are interested, I do this about once a month. You can find everything we do at colorvowel.com and you'll find that on the training page. I've left a link there for you. Um, know that you can take the chat and you can either copy and paste what you see there or you can actually save the chat. I believe I've left that setting available to you. Um, so there is a little, um, little icon next to somewhere in the chat there. If you hit that, you can copy the information that you have in the link there, okay? Any final questions before we sign off? I hope to see you at one of our upcoming events, our session on speakers of Japanese and what they need for improved pronunciation. That's a super fun panel discussion that we're running tomorrow. Uh, so you can sign up there at colorval.com and I'll be seeing you soon, okay? Thanks so much. Thank you, Karen. All right, take care. Thanks. Good to see you, Robin. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.